Good night. Good night, teacher. So we are on the session number four. Uh, this is the last session for this week. We have completed the first week of this course. So in this case, we um, are going very fast with this time. So that's why uh, we were saying that you need to, to work on the platform because if you can see, um, we don't have like a lot of time to do this kind of activities. And in this case, it's because uh, in some cases we um, we are not like having a lot of uh, time because we are working and we are thinking about different things. And uh, when we uh, say, oh, I'm going to do that activity is not like the time. And but give me a second. Oh, in this case, it's not like this. Okay, we are going to begin with this session number four. Um, we are going to complete the information that we have for today. And also we are going to uh, see if you have completed the section one and two. Hay alguien que no haya completado las dos secciones o que todavía tenga problemas con alguna de las secciones? Creo que ya para este momento ya todos hemos terminado eh, actividad de la plata de la plataforma en la sección 1 y 2, ¿verdad? So I think it's not like we are going to focus on the exercises. Give me a second because I am uh, like helping someone with uh, the, the exercise. But give me a moment. Teacher, no sé si soy yo, pero no le escucho nada. Helping someone with the activities on the platform. And she has like a, a trouble with some exercises. So that's why you won't listen to the information because I had the microphone off. So we are going to begin with the review. In this case, we are going to talk about the simple past. That is the topic that we were developing yesterday. And also, uh, we are going to uh, see some exercises related to the topic. Because in this case, um, hello, uh, you were saying that you complete the section. So in this case, we are not going to focus on the activities. Good night. So if someone has problems or has troubles with some activities, you can send a message on the chat and I'm going to help you. If not, we are just going to see the information of the simple past.
So I'm going to share with you the information. Ah, remember that this is the last day of this week and I'm going to send to you the link of the document in which we are working. In this case, in, in, in the document that I am working for you. So I'm going to send the, um, the link to the group of WhatsApp. If someone is not on the group of WhatsApp, you can also tell me and we are going to share with you the link of the group. Si hay alguien de ustedes que no está todavía en el grupo de WhatsApp, eh, puede avisar y se le va a agregar o se le va a enviar el enlace o la invitación, ¿verdad? Para que pueda accesar al grupo, porque yo voy a mandar el enlace de este documento al grupo. So I'm going to show you the document again, and I'm going to begin ex explaining the different elements that we can find in this topic. So in this case, we are going to uh, continue talking about the um, the simple past. Oh, I'm so sorry. The simple past, but in this case, I'm going to uh, show you different uh, parts that we are going to use when we are talking in English. Um, in this case, is related to, to the uses that we can give to these uh, structures or these tense. It is not related of how to create a, a sentences um, or the structure to create questions or how to write negative statements. In this case, we are going to use information related to the uses of the simple past. ¿Cómo vamos a utilizar el pasado simple? En este caso vamos a hablar de cinco usos que le vamos a dar a esta estructura. Eh, también vamos a explicar algunos, algunas partes, ¿verdad? Que van inmersas en la información que no están de forma separada, sino que solo están ahí. Y vamos a traerlas un poco a la luz. Eh, I'm going to show you a lot of examples. Vamos a ir poniendo varios ejemplos. Eh, des, después de cada una de las partes, ¿verdad? De cada uno de los usos. Y luego tenemos dos ejercicios. Vamos a hacer dos ejercicios que yo les voy a poner en el documento que son de lectura. Vamos a leer eh, cierta información y luego vamos a responderlo. So we are going to begin with the information related to the simple past, that in this case, we're going to write the topic that is simple past. Vamos a explicar un poco qué es el pasado simple y sus usos, pero voy a tratar de hacerlo más grande para que se vea mejor. And in this case, I have the information for you here. So in this case, we have this one that is uh, bird tense uh, in which we can use this uh, specific tense to show that a complete action took place in a, a specific time in the past. The simple past is, is also frequently used to talk about past habits and generalizations. And we are going to see the uh, five different uses. But in this case, we are going to begin with the general idea about the simple past. This is a bird tense, which is used to show that a completed action took place at a specific time in the past.
So this is like the um, general idea about the simple past. Es como la idea principal de a qué se refiere el pasado simple. Tenemos varias cosas por ahí. Primero, vamos a hablar de acciones completas, acciones que han sido completadas en el pasado y que te, eh, estaban en un tiempo en específico. Luego, también vamos a ver qué se utiliza para hablar sobre hábitos del pasado y generalidades. Pero en este caso vamos a ver cuáles son los cinco diferentes usos. So, primero vemos las formas. Esto es solo como un recordatorio de cómo se ven las diferentes formas de oraciones en el pasado. In this case, we have uh, statements or positive sentences, negative sentences, and questions. In this case, is use the verb with the ed at the end, but also we can use the irregular verbs in this uh, structure. And the questions are made with did, that is the auxiliary, and negative statements are made with did not. Elementos básicos para hacer oraciones en pasado. En el caso de las statements, vamos a utilizar verbs plus ed, que son los verbos regulares, vamos a ponerlo por acá, regular verbs, y vamos a poner por acá irregular verbs. Para hacer oraciones solo agarramos nuestros verbos regulares o nuestros verbos irregulares en pasado y creamos nuestra oración. Questions. Auxiliary did. And in negatives, we use did plus not. Son los elementos básicos para nuestras oraciones. Ahora vamos a ver los usos. Number one, completed actions in the past. That is the main thing with this tense. Completed actions in the past. Este es como el, el, el objetivo de, este, de esta estructura, ¿verdad? Del pasado, que es hablar de acciones que ya fueron completadas en el pasado. In este caso, we are going to use the simple past to express the idea that an action started and finished at a specific time in the past. Sometimes the speaker may not actually mention the specific time, but they do have one specific time in mind. In este caso, vamos a hablar de tiempos específicos. And we are going to focus on something. Ya les voy a explicar algo más sobre esto de de tiempos específicos. But let me uh, write the, um, the general idea and also the examples, because in the examples is the clue about the things that I'm going to uh, explain to you.
Okay, in this case, the examples. So I need you to focus on some elements that we are going to add to these examples because we are going to like write some words that are the same in the um, in the sentences. So you need to focus on those elements and why we are going to use those words in that specific structure. In this case, we have the first one. I saw a movie yesterday. Next one, I didn't see a play yesterday. I didn't see a play yesterday. Last year, I traveled to Japan. Last year, I didn't travel to Korea. Did you have dinner last night? Did you have dinner last night? She watched her car. He didn't watch his car. So we have these examples here. Now, I'm going to mark two different things. I'm going to mark the, um, the verb, and also I'm going to mark another word. So in this case, we have these verbs. In this case, we have saw. Teacher. Tell me. One question. Tell me. Uh, what, is the, what is the difference the sad? Wash it looked. Okay. So in el, in this case, what uh, watch? Vamos a ponerlos por acá. Watch look. Y me dijo el otro. Uh, see. See this one. Uh -huh. Okay. En este caso, watch lo vamos a utilizar para ver eh, televisión. Eh, una serie, um, algo en la computadora. Se refiere más que todo cuando vemos. O sea, sí habla de mirar. O sea, le, la cuestión es que sí hablamos de mirar, pero lo utilizamos para diferentes como contextos. En este caso, el watch, yo lo voy a utilizar cuando eh, esté viendo una película, eh, pero en tal vez en el televisor no tanto en el, en el cine. Eh, podemos decir que eh, sí se utilizan como a veces para las mismas cosas, pero como que nosotros le damos como el contexto. En el caso de sí, que es el primero que está ahí en pasado, que es so, es mm, darnos cuenta es como darnos cuenta o estar seguro de, de algo. Es mirar, pero utilizando los ojos. Obviamente todos funcionan para este mismo contexto, pero es como darnos cuenta de algo. Ah, vi que pasó un ave. Yo me di cuenta que estaba pasando por ahí. En el caso de look, que es directo a nuestros ojos. Básicamente es como el significado que se le da que va directo a nuestros ojos en una dirección particular, que eh, puede ser mirar directamente a alguien o a algo por una cierta cantidad de tiempo y prestar atención. 
que son cosas diferentes, ¿verdad? Yo puedo estar eh, seeing something, yo pude haber visto algo, pero no le puse atención. En cambio, look es para mirar algo por cierto tiempo y prestarle atención a lo que está pasando. Y pues ya decíamos, el watch siempre significa ver, pero lo voy a utilizar cuando esté utilizando alguna pantalla o cuando yo esté viendo alguna pantalla. Ok. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Nosotros podemos utilizar los tres, pero ahí le vamos a ir poniendo como diferentes eh, contextos. So in that case, it's uh, almost the same meaning. Y también tenemos la palabra observe, que es observar. Pero en este caso solo tenemos estos tres. Ok, entonces, I was saying, la estructura o la eh, parte principal de nuestra oración. I saw... I didn't, que es como nuestro auxiliar en negativo. Luego tengo I travel. Este es mi verbo en pasado. Eh, again, negative, didn't. Aquí, did, my auxiliary in past. Washed. And again, negative. Tengo mi estructura pasada. Ahora voy a marcar otra cosa. I'm going to use this one, green. Um, let's see if I can mark all of them. I think it is possible. I think, I think. Okay, I, uh, I have five. Green. Yes, it is. Okay. ¿Por qué estoy marcando esas otras palabras? Yesterday, last year, last night. And when we are talking in past, in this case, when we are using this structure, we are going to use a specific words that help me to give like more information about the time in which I um, perform an activity. En este caso, yo estoy utilizando palabras que me eh, dicen a mí en qué tiempo específico yo hice una acción. Those words are eh, known as time expressions. Estas son las expresiones de tiempo. Cuando yo hablo del pasado y yo hago una oración como la que tenemos en la pantalla, yo le voy a agregar el tiempo en que lo hice. I... I'm going to use different uh, verbs in this case. I cut an onion yesterday. Yo corté. In this case, we are going to use chopped. Chopped. An onion yesterday. Yo corté o hice rodajas o piqué una cebolla cuando? Ayer. I traveled. En este, en este caso, como el, el de Japón. I traveled to Mexico last month, el mes pasado. En este caso lo tenemos igual que el ejemplo. Last year, I traveled to Japan. I am specifying in which time I perform this action, this activity. En este caso, yo estoy especificando en qué momento del pasado yo realicé esta acción. En ese caso, yo utilizo las time expression, que son básicamente estas palabras. Yesterday, last year, the last hour, eh, this morning, eh, uh, ten years, that kind of expressions. Vamos a utilizar ese tipo de expresiones para referirnos a las acciones que ya realizamos en el pasado. Now, we are going to see the number two. Ya tenemos ahí completo el número uno e incluso tenemos información extra de este. Vamos con el número dos. In this case, we are talking about the, action, the completed action in the past. Acciones completas en el pasado. But in the number two, We are going to talk about a series of completed actions. Serie de acciones completadas. Es un listado. 
lista de acciones que completamos en el pasado y que tienen relación entre sí. Ya vamos a ver los ejemplos de cómo queda esta parte y cómo funciona esto de eh, series of completed actions. So in this case, it says that we use the simple past to list. Aquí es para hacer una lista, ¿verdad? Of completed actions in the past. These actions happen first, second, third, fourth, and so on. En este caso es como decir algo pasó primero, segundo, tercero, cuarto, y ahí vamos enlistando nuestras eh, acciones. Ahora, vamos a ver los ejemplos de cómo queda esa información ya puesta en contexto. In this case, we have the first example, and it says, I finished work. That is the first thing. I finished work. Terminé de trabajar. Walked to the beach. Caminé a la playa. And I found a nice place to swim. Aquí llevo una secuencia. Primero, terminé mi trabajo. Segundo, caminé a la playa. Y tercero, encontré un buen lugar para nadar. Next one. He arrived from the airport at eight. Checked into the hotel. At nine. And meet the others at 10. Aquí igual secuencia. Primero, él llegó del aeropuerto a las 8. Se, eh, se presentó, ¿verdad? En el hotel o se anotó o... Como quieran eh, an, uh, traducir la parte de checked. Él eh, pues hizo su checked en el hotel a las nueve y luego se encontró con los otros o se reunió con los otros a las diez. En the last example, did you add floor? Did you add floor? Pour in the milk. And then add the eggs. Aquí estamos hablando de cocina. Le agregaste la harina, le pusiste la leche y luego le agregaste los huevos. Es la secuencia, ¿verdad? Así es como aplicamos esta información de la parte número dos de lo que es el, eh, el simple past. Now, we are going to see number three. Vamos a ver el tres de qué trata. In this case, it related to the duration in the past. Duración. And in this case, the simple past can be used with duration, which, which starts and stops in the past. A duration is a longer action often indicated by expressions such as for two years, for five minutes, all day, all year, etc. In this case, we may think that they are the same as the first one, but it is not, because in this case, we are using different expressions related to the time. 
In this case, we are using expressions that you can wrote with for. And in the first case or in the first part, you are just using the time expressions. En la primera parte utilizamos expresiones de tiempo que se refiere a momentos. Ayer, hoy en la mañana, eh, hace 10 años, eh, hace dos semanas, el año pasado. Ese tipo de expresiones. En el caso de duraciones en el pasado, vamos a utilizar frases que lleven for, en la palabra for, for two years, por dos años, por cinco meses, por cuatro días. En ese caso es diferente, no es lo mismo con los time expressions, sino que habla exactamente de un periodo de tiempo. And we are going to see the examples. I lived in Japan for two years. They sat at the beach all day. They did not stay at the meeting the entire time. We talk on the phone for 30 minutes. And we have the examples there for this number three. We're going to see the number four. And we are almost done with this part of the uses of the simple past. Then when we complete these five parts, we are going to see the two exercises that we have for today. In the first exercise, we are going to read something related to the last summer of someone and the activities that they perform in that time. And then you are going to help me answering some questions, but in this case, you're not going to write the answers. You are going to tell me the answers. In the second one, you are going to read another um, article, paragraph, text, as you want to say. And then you are going to tell me the past form of the verbs that I am going to list in the document. In that case, you are going to find the past of these verbs on the text. And then you are going to um, read some uh, statements and you are going to tell me if they are true or not. 
In the case that the statement is not true, you are going to tell me what is the correct uh, option for that statement. But we're going to see the, the exercise in a couple of minutes. Then we are going to see the number four that it's talking about habits in the past. Este habla de hábitos en el pasado. This, um, the simple past can also be used to describe a habit which stopped in the past. Hábitos que teníamos en el pasado, pero que se detuvieron y ya no los realizamos. Let's see the examples for this uh, number four. And it says, I study English when I was a child. She worked at the movie theater after school. Oh. Tell me. E, for example, uh, uh, before I ran everything and, and, and do, es como antes corría todos los días en la madrugada. En ese caso... You can say I did run every morning eh, two years ago. Yo corrí todas las mañanas hace dos años, por ejemplo. Pero como ahora ya no lo realiza. Bueno, en ese caso usted puede especificar el tiempo en el que lo hizo. Así como aparece ahí, when I was a child o after school. Ustedes pueden poner el tiempo en el que realizaron esa acción pero que en este momento no lo están haciendo. Obviamente no van a poner que no lo hacen en este momento, sino que simplemente van a poner la acción que realizaban. De un tiempo y en, pasado. Y en, y en qué tiempo. Obviamente utilizando verbos en pasado. Porque uh -huh. en este caso, como son hábitos que nosotros teníamos eh, y que ahora por diferentes razones ya no lo hacemos. Eh, puede ser que ustedes cantaban cuando estaban en la escuela, pero que ahora ya no lo hacen. Eh, tocaban algún instrumento o en su caso que es de correr verdad o hacer ejercicio en algún momento específico del día pero que ya no lo hace usted lo puede agregar como su acción y cuándo uh -huh. lo hacía es como al fin al final se tocaría Ajá. Eso. al final ah, okay. usted le va a especificar el tiempo en el que lo hacía okay uh -huh. thank you coach you're welcome and the last one they never went to school They never went to a school. They always skipped class. They always skip class. Ellos nunca iban a clases. Ellos se saltaban las clases. Ah, ellos nunca iban a la escuela, ellos se saltaban las clases. So, in this case, is related to things that we did in a time in the past. Maybe it could be like very long time ago. Uh, we are talking about uh, five, ten, fifteen years, even twenty years, depending on the on the age that we have in this moment. But also it is like um, talking about a couple of days because we as human, we can change a lot in a couple of days. So it is related to some habits that we perform when we uh, are in the past. But uh, we think and we say, oh, it is not like I'm going to have this uh, activity or this habit all my life. And it is related to playing something. It's related to eating something. Also with some 
habits like smoking, drinking alcohol, uh, drinking soda or something like that. Whatever you want to write in this kind of um, part of the simple past. And the last one, that is the number five, is kind of the same, but at the same time, it is different. Se parece mucho a la de los hábitos en el pasado, pero también eh, tiene un poco de diferente porque en el caso de los hábitos es hablar sobre mí, sobre las cosas que yo hacía y que ya no hago. En el caso del número 5 que habla de past facts or generalization, está hablando de cosas que son eh, ciertas pero que no siempre me involucran a mí como el, uh, el principal, sino que puede ser algo relacionado con la historia en general, igual que lo de las generalizaciones. Puede ser algo en general y no simplemente que me abarca a mí. Puede ser también relacionado a cosas eh, emocionales o de personalidad. In, in this case, I'm going to show you some uh, examples. One is related to the personality. Uh, another one is related to food. Um, another one is related to general things that people did in the past. Así que vamos a ver tres cosas diferentes relacionadas con past facts and generalizations. Um, but let me see here. I'm going to change this one. And I'm going to write here the examples. Um, I think that is a, a problem right now because I have a, a couple of troubles with my internet too in the previous uh, session. So I don't know why it is kind of this low, but I had problems too. So in this case, tenemos algo que eh, en este caso no es un no es un hábito, es algo eh, general porque eh, estamos hablando de la personalidad. Dice que ella era tímida. She was shy as a child. De niña era tímida, pero ahora hay un cambio. Ahora es como más llevadera, más amigable, más extrovertida. Entonces, hay algo que afectaba su personalidad y que con el tiempo cambió y ahora es diferente. Next one. He didn't like tomatoes before. He didn't like tomatoes before. Another one. No tiene nada que ver con hábitos porque es un gusto. No le gustaban los tomates antes, pero ahora puede que sí le gusten los tomates. Y esta es relacionada con las personas en general. People paid much more to make cell phone calls in the past. Hmm. Hmm. En este caso, las personas pagaban mucho más para hacer llamadas telefónicas en el pasado. That is a past fact that people paid a lot of money to make a phone call in some cases. Now, uh, there you have the different uses of the of the simple past. In this case, we can say, oh, it's very easy to create uh, statements with these kind of structures, but also we need to, to learn how to use them correctly. In this case, we have five different uses and we can apply different elements 
in different statements that are part of the group of the five uses of the simple past. Siempre vamos a poner atención a los grupos, ¿verdad? No los vamos a utilizar así como específicamente yo voy a denotar cuál grupo estoy utilizando, pero sí tengo que utilizar esos elementos que yo necesito para cada uno de estos grupos. Ahora, déjenme detener un momento esto porque les voy a eh, poner en la pantalla la imagen de la actividad. Porque solo voy a poner primero lo que es el texto. Luego les voy a hacer las preguntas. Voy a poner los dos textos de una sola vez. Así es más fácil. Luego les muestro las preguntas y luego la actividad de los verbos. So, let me put the text here. I have the number one. Okay. So, in this case, you are going to put into practice your reading skill. Vamos a trabajar con el, la parte de la lectura, con la habilidad de la lectura. I have the first one, I need the second one. Next one. Okay. I almost done. Okay. And okay. True. Vamos a empezar con la primera. It's called Lab Summer. Les voy a dar un par de minutos para que ustedes puedan leer despacio la información y luego yo empiezo a hacer preguntas para ver si ustedes ya saben cuál es la respuesta a la que se refiere. In this case, it's related to Lab Summer Vacation and the travel that have Helen with, he, with her family. So we are going to read the information and then we are going to answer some questions. So we are going to begin reading. I'm going to like doing a kind of bigger like this and read the uh, information and then I'm going to ask you some questions. So let's begin. We have, I think, me go. tell me. Tell me, tell me. Oh, okay. Um, I Helen last summer holiday. I went, I went with my family to Paris. Mm -hmm. We went with car. They was me, my parents, my brother Tom, and my little sister, sister Susan. We live in the Britain, and we. Um, a what a we are English with times the most interesting class in Paris as the Hilfin Tower, the Eiffel, Eiffel Tower, Eiffel, Eiffel mm -hmm. Tower. Thank you, Eiffel Tower, the Loring Loring Muse, Muse Museum, Museum, sir, Museum, and we made the Siri tour. I love in because Paris in very beautiful city. On the toda coach. Sí, sí. Okay. Usted aquí es para práctica también. Okay, okay, coach. On the fifth day we went to Euro Disney that was fantastic. Uh, we had agents. You're selling a lot. We strained in Euro Disney for dates. They were the most in existing existing dates I have of my life we were on very time because we had to the wall I love to the watch everything I jumped and jumped enjoy the joy enjoy the joy. I'll enjoy yes enjoy <laughs> sorry enjoy and the amusement I don't know uh, coach. 
Amusement. Amusement. Uh, mm -hmm. At the amusement, my sister is only for four years old and she love she love in my meet and the Disney charters and they were very funny. We stayed in a hotel in Saidi. Euro inside, mm -hmm. inside Euro Disney. Oh, very good. Thank you. Okay, we have that information there. Eh, Jaime nos hizo el favor de leerlo, ¿verdad? Thank you very much. Um, and in this case, we are uh, reading the vacation of this family. Helen is explaining the different activities they perform in that time. They were to different places, but I'm not going to uh, to tell again the places because you are going to help me with the answers of the question. So, in the first place, vamos a ver cuál es la primera pregunta. En este caso, está bastante sencilla. Where did Helen go last summer? ¿A dónde fue Helen el pasado eh, verano? ¿A qué lugar fueron? A Disney, a París. A París, a París. That is the first thing, París. Very good. Okay. How did she go? ¿Cómo fueron? How did she go? ¿Qué, qué método utilizaron para she ir? Went, she went by car. Ah, went by car. Ah, very good. She went by car. Number three, who did Helen go with? Who did Helen go with? With her family. Mm, with her family. But in the family, we have what members? His parents. Ah. Uh, her parents. Brother, sister. Parents. parents. Sister. Sister, brother, sister. Brother. 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 sister. Ah, yes. very good. Um, parents. Uh -huh. The parents, the brother, and the sister. Very good. Um, next one. What did they see in Paris? ¿Qué vieron ellos en París? The Eiffel Tower. Hermosa ciudades, beautiful city. The mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Ah, mm -hmm. very good. Okay, very good, thank you. They see, or in, in this case, when we are using the, the, the structure, they saw the most interesting places in Paris. Also, they saw the Eiffel Tower and the Louvre Museum. Vieron el Museo de Louvre, vieron eh, la Torre Eiffel, y también vieron muchos lugares interesantes. Muy bien. Did Helen like Paris? ¿Le gustó París a Helen? Yes. Yes, yes she loved it. Yes. Okay, she loved it. She Very good. It. Where did they go on the fifth day? ¿A dónde fueron en el quinto día? Disney. Disney. Euro Disney. Disney. Okay, they were to Euro Disney. Very good. Um. Did they enjoy it? The Euro Disney? Disfrutaron ir a Disney? Yes. 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 Very yes. funny. Ah, it was very funny. Very good. Fantastic. This. Ah, fantastic. How long did they stay in Euro Disney? ¿Cuántos días se quedaron? Four, Four days. days. Ah, very good. Four days. Were Four they days. tired? Yeah, because they have to walk. To go to walk. A lot of watch. Ah, they uh, had to walk a lot mm -hmm. towards the things they have to do in the Euro mm -hmm. Disney. Very good. Um, did they stay in Euro Disney for three days? Se quedaron por tres días. No, it was four days. Four ah, days. 
Okay, it was four days, not a three. How old is Helen's sister? Four years. Ah, four years. Very good. And who did Helen meet in Euro Disney? The Disney characters. Ah, okay, very good. Ella conoció a todos los personajes de Disney en este viaje. Muy bien, excelente. Excelente trabajo todos. And we are just going to see the other one. Vamos a ver el otro. En este caso solo lo vamos a leer y vamos a dejar la siguiente parte del trabajo para el día lunes. Solo vamos a contestar eh, las dos partes del de texto. En este caso tenemos este. The dog who came to stay. Yes, they met my, uh, the Mickey in this case and all of the characters. So in this case, we have this information. It's kind of a small letter, but I'm going to read the information for you. So it says, last summer, Matthew and Fiona went on holiday to Spain. They stayed in a small cottage. One day, Matthew went for a long walk. He found a dog. It was lost. It was a stray dog. It weighed his, toy, his, his tail. It followed Matthew home. Fiona liked the dog and she gave it some food. It ate the food very quickly. It sat down outside their front door. At 10 p.m. it was cold. Fiona let the dog inside. It sat beside her on the sofa. It was a girl dog. They gave her a name, Hilda. Hilda stayed in the cottage with them. Six days later, it was time to go home, back to England. Fiona took Hilda to a dog rescue center. Sadly, they had no place for Hilda, but they offered to help. They transported Hilda to England to Fiona and Matthew's house. Fiona and Matthew paid the dog rescue people a fee. The fee wa was 500. Um, now Hilda lives with Matthew and Fiona. She sleeps on the bed and eats pedigree chum and nice dog biscuits. Matthew takes her for a long walk every day and she sits on Fiona's knee in the evenings. Matthew and Fiona love Hilda and Hilda loves them. That is a very good uh, a story because we have um, in some moments we meet this kind of uh, dogs, uh, the uh, stray dogs. That is very sad to find this kind of uh, dogs outside. And in some cases, we, we want to, to help this uh, kind of animals, but it is kind of difficult sometimes because in some cases we don't have the money or the way to transport this kind of animals. But if we have the opportunity to do it, we can um, give them another opportunity. Tell me, Marin. Yeah, teacher. Uh, my question is, when you when you say a stray dog, you mean like a dog that lives in the streets? That exactly. Doesn't have a home? Exactly. That is the meaning of a stray. Um, eh, en, el, en la traducción al español es callejeros, stray dogs, perros callejeros. Así que eh, that is the meaning. Uh, dogs that live on uh, the streets and don't have a house. So this is the, the text that we have for the second activity. And I am going to add the list of the verbs that you need to, to find the past form of those verbs in this text. And also, I'm going to add the uh, statements that you are going to decide if they are true or false. But in this case, I'm going to add the whole thing. Um, lo voy a agregar antes de mandarles el, el enlace de, um, del documento para que tengan todo el, el, el texto completo, porque ahí está a la mitad, le falta la otra mitad, que son las actividades para que ustedes la vayan leyendo y el lunes solo vamos a dar como un pequeño review de este texto y de las respuestas. So, I'm going to add the whole thing on the document and I'm going to send to you the link of the document. So, 
this is the last session of this week. So we are going to see on Monday, uh, we are going to begin working on the section number three of the platform. So we are going to end here the session and we are going to see each other on Monday. Have a really good night and also have a really good weekend. See you on Monday. Good night. Good okay. night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thanks to you. you Good, night. Good night. Good night. Bye. Goodbye. See you on Monday. Bye. See you on Monday.